Why do we do it? Z lies inside the circle C. C is a circle of radius R centered at the pole at Z0. We let Z prime be a variable at the surface of C. So previously we would have done something like we would have set up our circle C maybe like this red line. And I might call it C prime. And we would have applied the Cauchy integral formula along that. You'll see in a moment why we don't do it, but rather we consider the circle C and use the variable Z prime on that. It will allow us, as we shrink shrink down towards Z, towards Z, it will allow us to get actually at Z0. Remember the Cauchy integral formula is only valid in the limit. Finally, look at the denominator. The denominator is 1 over Z prime minus Z. This is important. We try to expand 1 over Z prime minus Z in powers of Z minus Z0, not Z prime. We do this because Z prime is outside of Z. Therefore, if we look at Z prime minus Z0 divided by Z prime, excuse me, Z minus Z0 divided by Z minus Z0, its magnitude will be less than 1 and such a power series will converge. You can look at the diagram on the top in order to convince yourself that this is the case. So the reason we expand like this is because doing so will allow for convergence. We will see later in the video that when we do a similar process for the Laurent series, we expand not in Z minus Z0, but in Z prime minus Z0. And the reason is that it's we have to essentially swap the terms here in order to get convergence. How do we go about doing this particular power series expansion? Well, the first thing we're going to do is a standard but important algebraic manipulation. Let's take, let's take two variables a minus b. We have 1 over a minus b. We introduce another variable c by adding and subtracting and rearrange so that we have a minus c outside of 1 over, excuse me, outside of 1 minus b minus c over a minus c. Plugging in our variables, we started with z prime minus z. For c, we use z0 and we rearrange. We saw at the start of the video that 1 over 1 minus x can be expressed as an infinite power series. We're going to do something similar with this, however, I'm not going to prove it. The unproven formula I'm going to use is the finite ge ge geometric sum. You can see this particular Wikipedia link if you'd like to know more. So the geometric sum using the variable q and the power m is, re is written as follows, or not, not the power, excuse me, the indice m is written as follows. We can rearrange that to get what's written at the bottom of your screen. And it's this expression which we're going to use. Note, by the way, we, we have a 1 over 1 minus x sort of thing here and here. So we've seen how 1 over 1 minus x can be written as a power series. So I'm sure you can accept, without even looking at the Wikipedia link, that this finite geometric sum, in fact, works. Let's compare to what we have. We have a 1 over z prime minus z. So what we're going to do is we, we rearrange it as we did a moment ago. We have z prime minus z0 outside of this here. And in doing so, what we have is this 1 over 1 minus q sort of term here. 1 over 1 minus q. Where q is defined as it is at the left hand side of your screen. I'll let you digest that for a moment. This means we can power series expand this particular expression here. In actual fact, let me be more specific. We power series expand this expression using this power series. The result, with a small bit of manipulation, is that at the bottom of your screen. Note, by the way, I've grouped all the terms going up to n, but left the n plus 1 term on its own. We'll see why in a moment. The really important point to note here, by the way, is we're after getting 
z minus z prime minus z zero on the denominator, whereas in the past we had z prime minus z. So it seems that in the limit we're able to shrink z prime the whole way down to z zero and let's just look at what what's happening at the pole itself. But let's not lose sight of the purpose. We are actually trying to evaluate this particular integral here. What we did was we power series expanded one over z prime minus z. So if you plug that back in, you'll get the expression at the bottom of your screen. I've called the n plus one term, by the way, the remainder. This will go to zero, but I'm not going to discuss why. I don't think it's necessary for the present treatment. So, using our power series expansion, we are able to rewrite our f of z, no, by the way, it's f of z, not f of z prime, and we have z prime minus z zero here. So, we're getting at f of z and the pole by using this dummy variable. But, we're able to use the generalized Cauchy integral formula in order to calculate all of the all of the uh, the terms. That's something I don't need to get bogged down in right now. 